Penguin Island, here we come! To celebrate our 5th wedding anniversary, Graham and I decided to go on a day trip to Penguin Island. We haven't been on a road trip since June, so I'm pretty excited to be on the road again with a $2 coffee in hand. The journey is big fun for me. We were boxed in by two road trains on Quinana Freeway. Then later we got beeped at and some birds may have been flipped for keeping the speed limit. Don't worry, they were probably rushing for the toilet. Diarrhea can't be good. We also saw two ducks on the freeway. One on the back of a truck and one on the back of a ute. That was pretty funny for me, I think. <laughs> then we finally got to Rockingham just in time to check in. I actually called ahead to see if we were late, but they did say that the latest we can get there is 15 minutes before departure time, so that was good. We got there as soon as they started opening the counter up for check-in. We were then told to be at the ferry terminal 10 minutes prior to departure. And as we were walking to the ferry terminal, I saw these really cute penguin footprints. I know that they lead passengers to where the ferry is for the penguin island, but I like to think that perhaps they are actual penguin footprints and that the penguins themselves have a ferry of their own. Today's film camera of choice is the Lomography Simple Use Reloadable Camera. It's like a disposable camera, but better, because you can keep reusing it. I got this in Canberra, in the Australian Capital Territory, last year, because I was almost out of 120 film for the remainder of that road trip. I used it mostly in Adelaide, South Australia and Kalgoorlie, WA and I really love how the photos turned out. Here are some of the photos that I took during that trip. So in hopes to replicate those photos and nostalgia, I loaded up with the Lomo 400. Lomo 400 is a color negative film and is mostly a very versatile film. Good for outdoors and good for indoors with a little bit of flash. So here I'm gonna show you how to reload your simple use reloadable camera from Lomography. To reload this camera, firstly you have to peel the sticker back. This is on the bottom side of the camera and that sticker reveals where the battery compartment is for your flash. This camera takes one AA battery, so I got this Energizer one and tested out the flash. It seems like once I press the flash button to power it up, the red light on the top portion of the camera turns on. So that's a good sign indicating that the flash on this camera still works and that my battery still has some charge in it left. However, as I was putting the cover of the battery compartment back on, I 
was not able to close it. The Energizer battery seemed a bit too big for this compartment. Like it just stuck out just a little bit and it wasn't straight into the compartment. Luckily, I kept the original alkaline battery that came with this camera. I installed it into the compartment, tested the flash, and it seems like we are all good to go. This battery still has some charge in it, and I finally was able to get the battery compartment cover shut. To the right hand side of this camera is the latch that opens the film back. So press it down and you'll be able to see the inside of the camera. So now I'm fiddling with the dial on the top portion of the camera. Make sure you position it to E for empty. Next on the bottom of the camera on the left hand side is a rewind lever I would say. Flick the lever out and position the take up spool of the camera until you see one of the bumps that latches onto the sprockets of your film. Take your film and insert it onto the right hand side of the camera and make sure that the top part of your canister is flush directly onto the top part of the compartment. This ensures that you can close the camera. Next, take your film leader and feed it across the camera onto the take up spool. Make sure that one of the bumps on the take up spool hooks onto the sprockets of your film. Use the rewind lever on the bottom of the camera to take the film and move it forward. And once you see that the film has been caught onto the spool, close your camera. Next to the film advance wheel is this rewind switch. Flip it to the left side so that you can turn your take up spool so that all of the film goes to the left hand side of the camera. To indicate that your film is getting wound up to the other side of the camera, on the top right hand corner of the camera is this little X. If that little X is spinning around, that means you are good to go. Another indication that you are doing this correctly is the film counter window. If you see that moving from the letter E, that means you are on the right track.
Once you feel a resistance from the rewind lever, please make sure to stop, check the film counter window, and if you are back to E, that means all of your film is on the take up board. Flip the rear one switch back to its original position, which is to the right hand side of the camera. That will lock the film into place so that it won't all go back into the canister. Now you can put away the rewind lever back into the camera body, advance your film to the direction that the arrow is pointing to, which is to the right hand side of the camera. And make sure to wipe down the lens as well as the viewing lens for any fingerprints just to test if the camera works as well as the flash I took a selfie with the color filter of course the color filters I feel are one of the best features of this camera after recording this entire section I just realized that I might have named the different parts of the camera incorrectly Oh well, you saw me reload the camera, so just follow the steps that I did on the video and maybe not pay so much attention to the voiceover. <laughs> It was very cloudy that day and to be honest, I was quite disappointed, but hey, this celebration must go on. In saying that, this film and camera combo has captured that blue shirt very, very well. Ah, the typical finger on the lens. Classic. No way. Despite it being a cloudy day, this film has certainly captured that bright yellow jumper beautifully. Thank you. Okay everyone, if I could just have your attention just for a moment. As we come in alongside the jetty, please just remain seated on your bottoms and make sure you're holding on to any small children. There might just be a small bar. Uh, if you're on the 1115 Dolphin Sea Lion Cruise, it's just this boat right here. So they'll get you on board straight away, but you will just need to show your boarding pass once again. Thank
Visitors to Penguin Island are urged to take any rubbish back to the mainland. There are no cafes or kiosks to buy food or snacks. This is to prevent rats on the island as they prey on penguins. So it's both of our first times at Penguin Island, but like five minutes in, we don't think it's Penguin Island, it's seagull. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So many seagulls, like you can see all around the white dots on the green foliage, or the green grass, bush, the white dots are all seagulls and they are everywhere. I love how green the bush looks in this photo and yes, there were seagulls everywhere. Penguin Island is a mostly untouched island. Visitors are only allowed to walk on the boardwalk and the beaches. Because of this, the wildlife can do as they please. There is a walk trail that goes around the island. It's a two kilometer return loop that takes about an hour. Also depends on how fast you walk. Just as I took this photo, the mother seagull came back to warm her eggs. So adorable. Nice. I know. But like, can you see that seagull there? There's two. All by itself? Well, there's two there, but I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Perhaps it's a little house for the penguins. They are everywhere on the island. Look, there's another one of those cubby houses. It's so cute. It's got like a little entrance. <laughs> Thoughts so far? Lots of birds. Yeah. I said before it's kind of seagull island, but the fact is it's hard to find penguins out in the wild during the day because that's when they feed and they try to hide because predators are also awake during the day. So they try to feed and hide so you can't see them. The only way to see them is the Discovery Center, which you'll have to buy a ticket for. So we pay $32 per adult that includes a ferry ticket as well as a discovery center ticket. 
but if you just paid for the ferry ticket you can still buy tickets at the entrance of the Discovery Centre. And there's lots of seagulls and pelicans and it seems to be the season for the eggs to be hatching. Yeah, nesting season. Yeah. Nesting season, hatching season and they seem to be... Very angry. <laughs> yeah, more irritable than normal. Because like everyone pass, every time someone passes by, um, they seem to be very angry. But it's probably because they have their nests close by. So, and this is not our island. We have the mainland, and this is their island. So, it's their home, and they want to protect their home. <laughs> this is Bird Island. Bird Island. <laughs> is penguin a bird? It is yeah. a flightless bird, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so excited for the feeding. With our tickets on hand, we headed into the Discovery Center to see the penguins. There are 10 penguins in the Discovery Center and they are mostly on rehabilitation. Either they are blind in one eye or their partner has passed or they're sick or something. So there are currently 10 of them in there and I feel like it is the only sure way for you to see penguins on the island. No flash photography is allowed because this will damage a penguin's eyes and make them blind. I think this film still did a good job capturing the beautiful creatures. Penguins are so cute. As soon as the feeding finished, we decided to head back to the mainland. And now we're back to the mainland! It was so much fun coming off from the return ferry. There were so many waves and it just kept rocking the boat. <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> How did you find Penguin Island? It was nice. Penguins 
eat fish. Of course they Lots do. of fish. <laughs> <laughs> they have fish for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Do they, did the lady say that they eat three times a day? I think she said Well, she did. said breakfast, lunch and dinner, yeah. Yeah. But they probably well if they're in the in the center, it means they're injured or well they get fed every two hours. So oh yeah, that's true. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but that was fun. So now we're headed off to Mandra Forum to have some lunch. <laughs> I'm hungry. Alright, so it's been a few days since we last went to Penguin Island and Mandra. Graham and I didn't get to go to the foreshore because it was already getting late. But today, my auntie and I are going to the foreshore in Mandra. I'll probably finish up the role of Lomography 400 in the simple use camera when we get there. Overall, I really enjoy this film and camera combo. Lomography 400 shines in whatever situation you put it into. You can use it indoors with the flash or even without the flash. And it still captures scenes beautifully with vibrant colors. It really is one of my favorite films. I highly recommend you guys to try the simple use camera from Lomography. It has the charm of a disposable camera and I just love how easy it is to use. It might take a couple of tries to get used to reloading the camera but in the long run I feel like this will save you a lot of money because film photography is quite an expensive hobby. I personally prefer using point and shoot cameras when I am traveling because I simply want to enjoy myself and take quick snapshots of the scenery around me. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and I shall see you on Wednesday.